are in a month of possessing our possessions, every possession of ours, we shall take it back. Obadiah says, and upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Lift up your right and say, I shall possess my possessions. Speaking on the subject, the rule of engagement in possessing your possessions. And so say, yeah, a woman, womra, oh, funny, yeah, would you this way? If you play the game rightly, you'll be able to possess your possessions. Say, what me young to ye, ye, dear, and yeah, what's up, dear, no bit me a fat. If you're not able to do it, it will be very difficult. So went me and ya, and ye, bear, dear, ma. In everything that we're doing, there are rules of engagement, and you must understand it. For lack of knowledge, will cause you to perish. Lack of knowledge will cause you to be afflicted. Lack of knowledge will get into bondage. That is why even when going for a work or employment, they say experience. They want to get an experience from you, whether you have something of expertise about what you're going to, you, they want you to do. Today, may you know the rule of engagement in possessing your possession. God said the land before Israel and said, Israel, I want you to go out there and possess it. And last week we found out that if you're going to be able to possess your possessions, then you must deal with the grasshopper mentality. You must deal with fear. You must deal with doubt. You must deal with unbelief. The Bible says, Bible says, without faith, nobody can please the Lord. And so if I want to please the Lord, I must walk and believe God for everything. Today, may you know the rules of engagement. Say amen. amen. When you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, Behold, I have set the land before you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Behold, I have set the land before you. Now hear me, somebody. The Lord has set your healing before you. The Lord has set your husband before you. The Lord has set your wife before you. The Lord has set your financial breakthrough before you. The Lord has set even your the, the fruitfulness of the womb before you. The Lord has set every good thing that you need before you. And He's saying to you today, take it, possess it. Take it. Possess it. I speak over somebody that whatever that has been said before you and you are believing God for, may you possess it. Is that right? Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. Go in. Take it. It's yours. Which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to be given unto them and to their seed after them. So God placed the land before Israel. And he said, Go. So the matter is, uh, it's not a matter of just sitting down and say, It will come. And you say, Oh, why cannot Jehovah to mommy? Look at 
person and say, beautiful song. Say the, tell the person, nice song. How many, when you're singing that song, you feel good? How many, how many feel good? You feel good, right? So if you sit down, and you think it will just come like that, you miss it. Because there is somebody that will not like you to take it. Now go to the book of Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. No, let's go to 19 first. Luke 19. Give me the 19 first, okay? Then let's go to 12. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a, a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and de delivered ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Occupy. In this month of your possessing pos your possession, I decree and declare unto you, everything that you need to occupy, you must occupy. Anything that must be yours, you must have it. Those, those who said, Amen, let it be unto you. Amen. Jesus said, A certain man was traveling. Then he said, I'm giving talents to my, my servants. He called them and gave it to them. And all he said was, Occupy. Make sure you take dominion. Make sure you become fruitful. Make sure you work hard to make sure that when I come back, there will be something that you can show me for. It's my prayer that you will not settle for anything less but only what God has said for you. Look somebody at somebody on your right and say, Neighbor! Occupy you. Take control. Take dominion. Rule. Reign. And be fruitful. So when you sit down, this story, there was there were some people said, "Let me go and use the thing. Let me occupy. Let me work at it," and they got more. And he said, because of what you have done, I'll give you 10 cities. Be in charge. Then another one came and said, hey, I'll give you, I'll be able to get five. He said, have control over five cities. Then one guy came and said, what do you give to me? I was afraid. I was lazy. I didn't know that I needed to fight. There are rules of engagement that I must work at. And so I hid your, your talent. He said, you are wicked. You are a fool. Out of your own mouth would the judgment come unto you. So he said, take him away. And whatever even he has, give it to the one that had ten. I came this morning. From today, nothing will be taken away from you. Amen. You will occupy. You will dominate. Amen. You will rule over every area. Amen. Your area of oppression. Any find of any find where you find yourself Amen. being employed. Even at your place of your work. Though you are not the CEO, you are not a boss, but your impact will be felt. Amen. I say your impact will be felt. Amen. When you get to the business center, everybody will begin to look at you and say, something is about you. They can't even put point, uh, point onto it. Can I speak over somebody? If you're a businessman, a businessman, whatever you are selling around that place, people will always be coming to your place and begin to buy because you have dominated the place. You are ruling the place. You are dominating and making sure you are occupying. You are taking charge. 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 The food you are selling, people will prefer your food than any other food because you are taking charge. They will ask themselves, Is she you see Juju? They will not understand it, but they will know one thing because you have understanding that you are supposed to possess your possession. You are supposed to dominate. Are you hearing me, somebody? If you believe it, say yes yes yes
We've been walking in mediocrity for long. We think to to be BDA. But I speak prophetically over somebody. May the Lord lift you to a certain level. So that you can be able to possess money. You have finances. You have certain breakthroughs. That when you say yes I have come. Everybody around will know you have come. Because the hand of God is upon you. May the Lord cause you to possess. Your possessions. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And prophetically, let me speak to somebody. If you are supposed to go for an interview, the job that you are applying for, because you are going to possess your possession, the Lord is going to upgrade. And they say, this one is too small for you. And they are going to begin to get a bigger one. Hi. See, I refuse to walk in fear. I refuse to walk in doubt. I refuse to walk with grasshopper mentality. I will arise and occupy. So the Lord says, I place the land before you. Say amen. amen. So God asks Israel to go and possess. But in possessing, there are rules that you must go by. And the first kind of rule I'm talking about is dealing with yourself. Last week, last week we dealt with fear. We dealt with grasshopper mentality. Today, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Glory to God. Say amen. I say glory to God. Amen. I say glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down the feeble knees. In possessing your possession, there are times. No, go back to. I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time. There are times these hands become weak. How many have, how many have passed through that before? The things you are going through, you find that you, 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 you become weak. You, you find that you, you can't handle it. The thing is overwhelming you. And you don't know what to do. You are confused. You ask yourself, is it the same God that I'm serving? Why am I going through this? But the Bible says, in possessing your possession, the first thing you must do is to make sure that any hands that are being hung down, lift it up. Lift it up. Don't walk in weakness. Eh? Don't walk in weakness. For if you do that, you cannot be able to possess your possession. Say to yourself, I am strong. Oh, I thought somebody would catch that dream. Say to yourself, I am strong. The Bible says, even let the weak say let the weak say let the weak say so he says lift up the hands which are hanging down and the feeble knees if you want to possess your possession the first thing is deal with yourself any hands that are hanging down lift it up the knees that have become weak let it be strengthened go to 13 go to 13 and make straight path your feet Make straight path your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Because you are going to something to possess something, to possess your possession, make sure you don't attempt it in weakness. No. Lift up your hands that are hanging down. The feet, the knees that have become feeble, strengthen it. Let it become stronger. Can I tell you a secret? When your hands are down and your knees become feeble, one secret of lifting up your hand and strengthening your knees is to pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Makotaka Lebroska Brakata. We pray down for one hour, for two hours, for three hours. You pray that uh, by the time you finish the one hour, you see strength coming into your hand. You see strength coming into your knees. You see strength coming into your spirit. Look at them and say, stop blaming yourself. For you are not weak. You are not weak. Tell somebody, I am strong. I am bold. I am strong. So if you are going to possess your possession, come from that background that you are not a weak individual. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, no TV mono. Yes, no TV. Oh, so And to what you say? My boss and Wagua. Obua. Why are you say? My name Wagua. Obua. My sorry. I will go to Ramu. I will yes to him. Amen. Obua. Nowadays, there is a statement I used to hear on Facebook. Obua. Oh boy. So tell the devil, oh boy. Oh boy. Say amen. amen. That is the background. If you really want to possess your possession, say amen. How many want to understand that? So be strengthened in the power of the Holy Ghost. Go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Quickly. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in Fufu. <laughs> be strong in your job. <laughs> be strong in what? Be strong in the Lord. Shake somebody's shoulder and say, Brother, sister, be strong in the Lord. Brother, sister, be strong. You know, at times, even your body can become weak. Will become weak. But inside you, there is some tenacity. There is some strength that comes out of you. And that helps you to overcome the enemy. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That is why the sun came, let it rain. Rain upon us. Holy Ghost fire burning me. Let me be active. Let me, let me be on fire. Let me burn. Go to 11. Go to 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And what again? 12. For, shall we all read this together? One, two. For. Let's all read. One to go. One to go. One to go. One to go. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Say we wrestle. Let me ask. Ask for this. Anybody can answer me. Whilst I'm preaching, wrestling and boxing, which is the fiercest? Are you sure? Why? Ask. Ask. Any embrenim. The Bible says we are not wrestling. He didn't say we are not fighting. Can you think about that? We are not wrestling. So the battle is not just a fighting. It's what? Wrestling. So we wrestle. And that is why you must know who you are. 
And that's why you must know where you stand. How many are getting what I'm saying? And it says, that is why you must put on the whole armor of God. You must be strong in the Lord. You must be strengthened. For it is not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. How many are getting what I'm saying? So you need to understand that as you encourage yourself, as you, be, you begin to strengthen yourself, your strength must come from God. I'll be strong in the law. Then let's go to the next rule of, uh, rule of engagement. Follow peace with all men and deal with bitterness. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Are you there with me? 14 and 15. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say amen. Can you give me 14? Hebrews 12, 14. Good. Follow peace with all men. I'll come to the next one. So I'll take the first sentence. I'll, 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 I'll come to the next. Then go to 15. Follow peace. Follow peace with all men. The rule of engagement. The rule of engagement. The rule of engagement. Follow peace with all men. Then jump to 15. Looking diligently. Lest any man fall of the grace of God. Lest the root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And thereby many be defiled. Notice. In this possessing your possession. As you deal with anything. That is giving you weakness. There is another one that you must deal with. Make sure that you are at peace with everybody. You ask, Papa, is it possible for me to be at peace with everybody from your end? As for you, people may not like you, but deep down in your heart, don't hate them. From the deepest of your heart, you have understanding, but you are wise as to how to handle them. The person has hurt you once. He has hurt you the next one. Even four times. So, Papa, are you telling me that I should be at peace with that individual? That is what the Bible says, be at peace. What is it trying to say? Make sure that you are at peace. You don't hate. You don't hate the person. You are not angry with the person. You love the person, but you are wise. If you have hit, uh, hit, hit me once, I will not allow you to hurt me twice. How many understand what I'm saying? Is that right? So be at yow. Or say be at peace. We are coming to a place. Be at peace. Possessing your possession, there are things that you must understand. So follow peace with all men. That means don't be fighting. Don't become angry with people and at people and hating them. That's what the Bible says. And in the part and co and tiny part and in the penny, not so awesome. 
Let your heart be right. Have a good heart. Say amen. amen. Then he says, looking diligently. The word is what? Diligently. Lest any man fall of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. If there is something in your heart, if you come and you begin to possess, because we will get there, and you are taking possession spiritually, and there is bitterness, there is envy, there is any kind of hatred in your heart, that possession cannot be possible. Are you hearing me? So look at someone and say, don't, don't hate anybody. Don't be envious of, of anybody. And don't have bitterness in your heart. Eh? Don't be bitter about anybody. Maybe the person has really, really insulted you. If you are forgiving the person, let it go. Married couples, are you here? Don't have bitterness in your heart concerning your husband or your wife. In fact, as for the husband, the Bible says, if you do that, your prayer will not be answered. It's simple as that. Say Yehovah. Yehovah. So look at them and say, have a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Because I am going to possess my possession. Say amen. amen. Then go to verse uh, verse. 13. No, 14. Good. Follow peace with all men. 14. Are you there? Good. Follow peace with all men and holiness. What is what? Holiness. Holiness. Walk in the fear of God. Because upon man Zion, upon man Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. 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 Then you, you shall possess your possessions. Okay. Now, I want us to go to the book of uh, John, chapter 14, verse 30. John 14, 30. So, as you deal with any weakness, spiritual weakness, and as you deal with any kind of bitterness, then you must understand, you must allow the hand of God to come upon you so that nothing evil will be found in you. Amen. John 14, 30. Shall we all read this together? One, two, if you can. Can you put it on screen for me? As for this, I want all of us to read it. John 14, 30. 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh. And had nothing. Church, are we all read together? Hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the praise of this world cometh and had nothing in me. Jesus is talking to us. Yes, the reason why he was able to overcome the prince of the world to redeem us, take us as possessions because he was holy. He was able to say to the world, the prince of the world is coming, but he has nothing. It's my prayer that in the name of Jesus, the devil find nothing in you. The Bible says in the book of Joshua, God, by His mercy and by His power, brought Israel out of Jordan, entered Jericho, defeated Jericho, caused the walls to fall down. And the next place of attack was a small city called Ai. And the Lord said to Joshua, Joshua, tell the people that nobody should take anything out of the place. For everything that is in Jericho is an accursed thing. Nobody should take anything. The Bible says there was one guy called Achan. When they were fighting, 
He saw some nice garments. He saw some shield, which was so nice. He converted them. Then he took it. No fire. And he hid all those things that he, he, he took away from Jericho. Now notice. Are you here with me? The prince of the world is coming. But he has nothing in me. May you come to that place. In possessing your possession. Now this way. There was a time I think I could, if I, I can really remember, I don't know whether it's in Brekum or we we're supposed to cast out some demon from a, a certain young man. So maybe by and there was another guy that was with us. Now And we said, in the name of Jesus, go. In Jesus' name, come out. <laughs> then the guy was so quiet. Why uh, are you doing? Then he turned around and looked at one of, our, of the guys and said, are you also among them? <laughs> I know everything about you. Are you part of it? If you don't leave this place, the way I will beat you, eh? what was the key? The guy was not living right. And he wanted to go and cast out demons. But the devil knows everything. That's why those sons of Sceva, when they wanted to cast out the devil, the devil from the, the madman, the, 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 the demons asked them, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Bible says he beat them well well. So, Bible says he can took those things and hid them in the tents. May the devil find nothing in you. Don't allow it, the devil to plant anything in you. Hatred, anger, fornication, everything. He shouldn't find because you must possess your possession. Say amen. The <laughs> It can this year, Bible say. Joshua said, go and spy out the, the, the land. Joshua said, they went and said, oh, it's a small city. So let's just take 3,000 people. Just 3,000. So they can handle these people. 3,000, just go. And so he sent 3,000. Before they got to the gate, the people of that city came against them. And they beat them well, well. Oh, no, and they started running away. And they killed 36 of them. The Bible says Joshua fell flat on the floor before the ark of God. Rent his clothes and put sackcloth on himself and dust. Ashes and all the elders. So at that time, all the pastors and the elders will, will be lying down there and say, God, why? God, why? And they, they, they were there from morning till evening. Then God came and said, Stand up. Why are you crying? There's sin among you. Somebody has taken the accursed thing. And that is why oh, you see what you see. And I'm so bring them out, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. And he fell on Achan. So and Joshua said, My son, tell me the truth. So he said, When I saw the garment, so when I saw the golden vessels, I loved it and I coveted it. Oh, so they are hidden in my tent. The Bible says, God says, until you destroy those things, you cannot possess your possession. So he gathered Achan and all his family. Then put them in the tent. 
The wife, when he was stealing, the wife was not there. When he was stealing, the children were not there. The grandchildren were not there. But God gathered all of them and said, you are part of it. And he killed all of them. That is how sin is dangerous. That's why you don't play with sin. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. And so you need to deal with sin. Look at someone say, Deal with sin, no, oh, deal with sin. Tell the person, Don't play with sin, no. Oh. And Jesus said, The prince of the world is coming and he has nothing in me. May that be your story. Yes, so see, we are so I say, may that be your story. And the key, name, name. So, if that is the case, the so Bible say, says in Luke chapter 11, I, look at some part I want the NLT. 21, 22. Luke 11, 21. I want the LLT. I gave you the L NLT. Good. Ephesians 6 says we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Hey, the things that God has for you, He loves you. He wants to, he wants to, to enjoy it. But there is somebody we call the strong man. So when you say, Wakano, then you rest. No. no. Look at what it says. For when a strong man like Satan, that's what it says. When a strong man, like who? Like who? From some. Come on, help me, church. When a strong man like. Can you see here? Can you see? What can I say? Satan. Satan. Huh? When a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe. What he has taken from you, they are safe. Go to 22. Go to 22. Until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him. Who is the stronger one? Who is the stronger one? Who is the stronger one? And who is he going to do it that through? You. Are you sure? Until someone, until someone, even stronger than, stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons and carries off his belongings. Today, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, yes, the rule of engagement is anyone that has that taking possession of what belongs to you, because the stronger one is in you, because the greater one is in you, you are going to take it back. Amen. I say you are going to take it back. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Because you are going to fight it and say, whatever he has taken from me, I'm not going to allow it even to be handled just like that. But I'm going to take it back in the name of Jesus. So you said to yourself, Satan, whatever you have taken away from me, in the name of Jesus, I come in the name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I take it back. I strip you of everything. I strip you of every power. I dispossess you of everything and I overrule and I overthrow everything that you have established in the name of Jesus. So in, in possessing your possession is wrestling. I say it's what? It's what? Wrestling. You fight. Many Christians they play even with prayer. Many Christians, when you call for prayer, they will not even be part of it. Today, I want to challenge you that whatever you are doing, 
The rule of engagement is that there is an enemy that will not like you to go for your possessions. It can be from your paternal family. There is a strong man in your family. And all that he's trying to do to make sure he stops you from getting what belongs to you. There may be a strong man in your, in your, in your maternal family. And they are fighting everything to make sure you don't get to where you belong. Maybe from your wife's maternal family or paternal family. And you taking it for granted. But I came this morning to let you know if you come to that place and take up your battle and wrestle against it and bind a strong man and ask the strong man to lose his hold over everything that belongs to you. They will lose their hold. They will lose their hold. I said they will lose their hold. For the battle is not ours. My battle belongs to the Lord. All that the Lord is asking of you, take it up to the higher level. I was watching some. You can put your hands together if you want. I was watching the clip about an eagle. And according to what I watch, when the eagle is fighting a serpent or a reptile, so when it when the Eagle comes down and lands on the floor. The, 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 the serpent is able to work it around the, uh, around the battle. And so the eagle will try to grip the serpent with its claws. And lift it up and get it into the suspension in the air. Because he knows, it knows that at that level, the serpent is powerless. And he leaves out the battle to a higher an, a, another level. This morning, I came to let you know if you are going through some situations and you can't even understand what is happening, just let the battle be lifted up. Let it get to another level. Get into the realms of the spirit. Begin to cry unto God. Begin to fast and pray. Begin to do midnight warfare prayer. Begin to break and bind. Begin to shut loose. Begin to cast out and deal with the supernatural powers. The principalities and powers and when you do that you can possess your possessions Amen. how many of you understand what I'm saying Amen. this morning will you stand on your feet the rule of engagement is that we are wrestling stop, stop relaxing stop thinking that it can happen just like that it will not come your healing will not just come your financial breakthrough will not come your marital issues will not be affected I tell you that things that will not work if you think it will just come it will not come that is why there are rules of engagement when a strong man has his goods and he keeps it safe but when a stronger man Oh, hear me. See me. See when me. the battle becomes fierce, Same. lift it up to another level. Get to another so level. So Get into so fasting. Get into prayer. Get into midnight prayer. Get into tongue speaking. Make sure that you pray as if you are mad. And call upon God. And you possess your possessions. Are you hearing me? How many want to possess your possessions? Then tell your brother, tell your sister, don't relax. For you are wrestling not with flesh and blood. Are you hearing me? Will you close your eyes and say this after me? We are going to pray into the prayer for the next, for the next five minutes. We can thank God 
Begin to thank God. That's now you have knowledge. Begin to thank God. We're giving you the grace.